Hey guys, a uh, new video for Last Epoch. This video is going to be an update to my Shatter Strike Spellblade character. We're going to go over uh, some gameplay in 500 Corruption, uh, what I've done to change the build, and what I would do uh, moving forward if I wanted to progress the build even further. Alright, so uh, let's get into a little bit of gameplay. Uh, we can see we are at about 500 Corruption, 527 right now. We can go and do a node over here, and we have a shade ready to do, so you can see some of the damage uh, and defense and that kind of stuff in gameplay. So far, the hardest part um, in 500 Corruption has been getting started. You can see we don't really have that much ward to start off with, um, especially if you get surrounded by, or you get one of the monoliths that have, like, every single mob type is a ranged mob, you know? <laughs> Had like a really bad one where it was like it had the poison gorgons it had the poison spitting um like uh guys whatever then it also had the um snake things that heal uh i forgot what they're called actually but basically every kind of ranged mob that you you know you hate was in this one monolith and also had these osprey guys um, yeah, that was, I, I just exited that one, but yeah, ranged monsters are a little bit annoying for this character. Well, first of all, because you're melee, you have to run up to them. They can hit you while you're running up to them, you know, and if you don't have your teleport, then, well, you're kind of screwed, right? But yeah, so far you can see, um, we can still take a few hits, um, and damage is definitely, um, not a problem at all at, at this corruption, so... Overall, pretty good. Not really the best monolith. I mean, it's not really that many, uh, many monsters here, but I mean, generally, this is kind of what it is. You just kind of go in pack to pack and um, blast them, basically, right? All right, so we're nearing the objective. We've got the Frost Warden. Oh, this guy. Okay, well, we'll just go and kill him real quick. All right, pretty easy. All right, so let's uh, jump into a shade real quick. All right, so for the most part, these shades are pretty easy. Um, you just have to avoid some of the other, you know, like big one-shot abilities. And for the most part, um, we're usually fine. But you can see, not really a big problem, and he is dying, you know, relatively fast. All right, uh, no amulet. Uh, let's get into some of the changes real quick. Gear-wise, I'm still kind of liking the focus on intelligence and cold resistance. Um, you can see my stats here. We have uh, 515. Cold res, was over 1k ward retention. I uh, have managed to up my freeze rate multiplier up by quite a bit. And I have changed a few um, gear pieces. I was using Throne of Ambition before, but I realized that in most cases, these in Monoliths, I'm not even getting enough stacks. And then against bosses, well, up till now, bosses have just been dying in like, what, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So wasn't really getting full benefit from this and having another um, idol with cold res is gonna give me more ward retention and the frostbite chance is very nice for damage. So I've just gone back to the four frostbite idol setup. I think, you know, for, uh, we do need to talk a little bit about um, melee in last epoch, especially spellblade, which is pretty squishy, right? Generally, I think building defense is going to be the way to go for this Spellblade character. And defense, I mean getting ward retention by intelligence or the cold resistance for the frostbite shackles. The reason for this is, well, we have to move into range, right? So we have a harder time playing as a melee character. Whereas if you're a ranged character, you can just spec full damage and just off screen things, right? If you do this on a Spellblade, well, you're just going to die, right? So you have to actually run up to monsters to attack them. And during that time, let's say if your teleport's on cooldown and you have monsters here shooting at you, you gotta run up to them and you're just gonna die, right? So building defense on a character that already has good damage, like I could lose 20 or 30% of my damage and it doesn't really matter because if I'm killing a monster in one second, it's gonna take 1.2 or 1.3 seconds to kill the monster. Even if it's like a Jewelra 
T4 Jora and I'm killing her in, you know, let's just say with full damage, I kill her in 30 seconds. But if I build more defense, I'm killing her in 35 or 40 seconds. It doesn't really even matter. But at the end of the day, building defense on this type of character is going to make gameplay feel a lot better, I think. Okay, so basically uh, that's why I'm sticking to actually intelligence stacking and the um, cold resistance stacking. As for passives, I have made a few small minor changes. Like I've gotten rid of the Runeward Cataclysm because it's only like, it's not really active all the time and it's only 15%. And instead I've actually just gone and gotten a lot more uh, freeze rate multiplier and increased damage in spell light as well, right here and here. Um, and then also I have removed a little bit of the mana that I used to have because oh, I've gotten a little bit used, more used to the rotation for this character. So now I'm more comfortable playing at a lower mana pool. I think if you're still kind of new to playing this character, uh, these kind of characters, then you might want to have more mana to make it a little bit easier for you uh, when you're still learning the combos and that kind of stuff. Okay, so next we're going to talk about future upgrades. Um, you know, this character does have very nice gear. Uh, you can see we have some nice 2 LP items, uh, you know, 2 LP Frostbite Shackles. I mean, this is pretty much a 1 LP item, but, you know, we got some nice uh, Humming Bees. We got 7 move speed, 7 ward on hit. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, this one only has 3% movement speed, but, you know, the gear is very nice. We look at these idols. These idols are like 10 million, 12 million uh, gold idols. Uh, this one's not all that good, but, you know, our gear is pretty, uh, pretty good. Now, what would you do if you want to push it even further? So I had a few ideas and uh, first of all, there's one that I'm not really 100% convinced about, but so there's the scepter here, frozen ire. Now this thing is going to really increase your damage. If we take a look here, so let's take a look at our frostbite damage. We're at a thousand um, per stack. If we use the frozen ire, this goes up to 2,700. So the reason for that is you also notice that our freeze rate multi went all the way up to 2,800. Well, and that's because this, if you slam on a T7 freeze rate multiplier like I had here, this is actually, I made this for a different character I was gonna play. And then I realized, wait a minute, it says like a thousand freeze rate multiplier on it. So uh, kind of crazy, right? Downside to this is, well, I guess I don't have attack speed on it. Ideally you want the T7 attack speed and then just T5 freeze rate multi, if you're gonna use this, right? Downside is uh, we are gonna be losing the ward generation obviously right so war generation lower attack speed and on the training dummy uh two humming bees in the end for like sustain sustained damage was a lot higher but anyways it's kind of an interesting idea you know if you maybe if you did have the t7 attack speed on here and you have one frozen ire one humming bee you might be doing more damage so that's kind of a damage option you are going to be losing a lot of ward generation um if you do use this weapon though Another interesting option if you wanted to go more defensive wise is I think the very end game chest that you would want to be using is going to probably be like an Exanguinous, right? Um, you can see one of the annoying things of playing this character is we only have 2k ward to start off with. So that means when we jump into Monolith, if you get jumped by some monsters, you can get one shot. So if we just put this on here, um, you can see we are actually going to be getting about um, three, uh, 4k ish ward. Uh, just starting out, right? And that's without any kind of, you know, LP on here and this kind of stuff. And you can even get the same mod on your Frostbite Shackles, right? So if you have a 2 LP Frostbite Shackles, you can get the melee attack speed. Uh, and then you get some kind of uh, gloves. Let's see if I have one. Yeah, something like this. It's like 10%. So you'll have a total of, what, 30% of missing health gain is ward. And you see we are sitting at pretty nice, you know, comfy. It's still going up. Only problem it is kind of annoying because my current chest has all my fizz res, so I have to get fizz res somewhere else. Uh, and then there is a the problem of when you use a potion or if you run over a potion, you heal, and then um, you lose a little bit of ward, sustain, or you know generation. So you might have to fix your potion, convert it to ward, and that kind of stuff. But I think overall, if you want to push really high corruption, like I think this build could easily do like 700 ish, maybe 800. But going up to a thousand is going to be very difficult, I think, on this character because of, well, first of all, you know, melee sucks. <laughs> and um, the ward generation, while it is good, it's not really enough to protect you from a lot of 
you know, big hits. So maybe going over to Exanguinous with the glove mod as well. You might have about five to six K ward starting out and in combat, you'll probably easily be going up to like, you know, 15 K or so, which might make things a little bit better. So overall, I think uh, I'll have a planner for an uh, Exanguinous kind of setup. Not really sure how important the potion converted to ward is, but maybe it is important. Who knows? But anyways, I'll have a planner for this if you're interested in like what I think the true endgame setup would be. And for all you like DPS Andes who just want the damage, then we'll also have a damage planner set up too. You can go check out. But basically the main difference in going for damage is going to be, well, instead of going for intelligence, you're going to go for frostbite on hit, basically and freeze rate multi like see uh like this relic here instead of the intelligence you'll have the exalted elemental damage over time or freeze rate multi basically and that's gonna you know pump up your damage by quite a bit okay uh, another interesting option is this cradle of the erased okay so this shield actually has some pretty crazy synergy with our build so first of all uh it gives you ward on block right you get extra block effectiveness and all this kind of stuff you get two block effectiveness per 1% total uncapped resistance. So since we're already stacking a bunch of resistance, let's just put this, uh, actually, yeah, let's leave this here. You see our block effectiveness is zero, but if we put the shield on, see we have about 2,200 because of all of the um, resistance we have. We're already resistance stacking, so this shield is gonna synergize very nicely. And uh, I'll have some clips um, in the background playing. You can go check out. But basically, um, this is going to really solve your tankiness issues, especially against ranged uh, monsters. You see, our block chance is 63%. If we did have the T7 exalted um, block chance, then we could easily get up to maybe about 70% block chance. And um, this is going to really help you with ranged monsters and this kind of stuff. Um, obviously, you are going to be losing a little bit of damage, but if you did want to go, you know, extra tanky, this is a very good option, I think. Uh, another pretty nice shield that's interesting is um, the Faith of the Frozen, because this has a lot of freeze rate multi. It has 75 cold res, then you can slap on some more cold res and all this kind of stuff. And uh, use a shield, get some more freeze rate multi, get some more damage, get some more ward retention that kind of stuff but i think overall if you're going to use a shield cradle the erase is better and when you do use a shield you can finally get rid of this gemini passive so you don't take nine percent increased damage all the time and you can put it somewhere else all right so that's pretty much it for um the changes so far that i've made to the build um pretty sure this can go a lot higher than what the corruption i have it at now 530 but you know i have a feeling that in its current state it's going to start having problems with um like say shade of orbis and that kind of stuff at maybe about 700 800 maybe about yeah 800 ish corruption i've already been all the way past a thousand on one of my other characters so i kind of know you know what kind of damage these guys are doing all the way at that level of corruption but anyways kind of don't want to start rambling uh that'll be it for this one guys uh take a look at the planners uh in the description and i uh, hope you like this build um I'm probably going to be playing a new build after this, so if any of you guys are going to be pushing it even further, um, let me know um, your results and that kind of stuff. It would be nice to hear. Alright, but that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.